let's review the historical background more in depth. Okay, so this man lived about 5,000 years ago. I guess he looks more like this nowadays. Whatever. The point is that he's the oldest human in history whose body has been decorated with tattoo marks. 5,000 years ago, people. First tattoos in Europe have been dated back to ancient Greece. They used tattoos to mark slaves and barbarians. Later, the Romans adopted this system and adapted it themselves to mark their gladiators as well as slaves. Around 1000 BCE, the Celts in Ireland were proponents of tattoos, and their tattoos were meant as celebration of life, individual success, but also as protection against evil spirits and protection while on the battlefield. During the Christian Crusades, tattoos were born as a sort of marking to show religious belonging to ensure proper burials in case of death among strangers. However, after the Crusades, people believed that tattoos were forbidden by the Bible, so the bearers of tattoos were all of a sudden seen as lower class people. It was not until the 18th century that the opinions started to change. As sailors began to sail across the world, the cultures mixed, and they started to return home with tattoos from far off places. So it started with the sailors, and then it went on to the soldiers, police, and eventually the elite circles containing prime ministers, dukes, but even kings and queens. We thought that we would collect some thoughts and general rules about having tattoos in school, and in this case, by HMS. Are there any rules about having or displaying tattoos in this school? Um, no, I don't think we have any formal rules for staff or for students about showing tattoos. Okay. Um, we have a, a dress code, um, so we're expected to be smart at work and professional. Um, but there's nothing that specifically mentions tattoos, as far as I'm aware. Okay. Uh, do you have any tattoos? And if you do, do you tend to keep them covered up? Yeah, I have some tattoos, and I do tend to keep them covered up. Does it have anything to do with your position, or is it just a personal choice? Um, I think it comes down to being professional at work, actually. Okay. Um, I think for other people, I suppose it depends on why they have tattoos in the first place. If you have tattoos for personal reasons, then perhaps there's not much sort of need to show them off to other people, actually. Um, I think if you have tattoos as more of a sort of fashion statement, then it's about what is appropriate then. Uh, at work, you know, if yeah. I went to a bank and, and you know wanted to borrow money from from the bank manager, you know, yeah. um, I would expect them to have a certain sense of professionality, perhaps. Okay. Yeah. Do you think there is any difference between students and teachers having and displaying tattoos? Yeah, I think so. Uh, in the same way as there are different dress codes for teachers and for students. So um, I think there is a difference. Um, I think it's very important for young people to be able to express themselves. Um, I think it's probably less important for adults in position uh, of responsibility to express themselves in that way, perhaps. In another case, there was a religious free school in Örebro, Sweden, that tried to issue a ban that forbade people with tattoos, students and teachers alike, from being hired or from attending the school. For the schools can decide on who they hire um, as, as teachers, um, who would you know perhaps best fit uh, their profile as a school. I don't think that people should be discriminated against um, in terms of you know perhaps their religious beliefs or. Um, you know, race or gender, th those should, things should never come into to, to question uh, when assessing the suitability of someone for a position uh, as a teacher, let's say. The tattoos are something which I suppose people can cover up. So of course, you can hire someone, you know, yeah. with tattoos, but require them to, to cover them up whilst at work. And then I think it's an issue, um, not so much of, of banning um, people, but making sure that people understand what the, the rules and procedures are for that particular workplace. Yeah. 
people should be allowed to to express themselves absolutely but at work you know maybe there's a, a certain you know filter there that, that people have to exercise in terms of uh, students, I think it might be a little bit different in the sense that um, denying someone an education uh, is a very serious issue and maybe not um, sort of equal to the fact that they have tattoos or not. So yeah, I don't know, I think it's very tricky. But I think that, you know, students shouldn't be denied an education based on, on, their, on their skin. Um, I'm not aware of those. I know a couple of teachers have tattoos, and they're totally well, fine allowed to have them. Um, I didn't read anything on policies. Maybe there are, but I'm working for a couple of years in school, and I've never heard about it. I the school, no, I'm not aware. I'm not aware. I don't. I don't know if there's any. Um, I feel like anything clearly, you know, not appropriate for a school environment, um, perhaps. But it's also censure, so no. Yeah, like a swastika on your forehead. That's not okay. That shouldn't be allowed. There was one case in 2011 when neither parents, students, or colleagues of the teacher had expressed concern for the teacher's appearance until a municipality politician came to visit the school and demanded the teacher's removal from the school. So the question is, should schools in Sweden be legally allowed to ban tattoos? Or would that be a violation of people's freedom of expression? Uh, I, th I think it mostly depends on uh, if it's a private school because then they can kind of decide whatever they want. Mm -hmm. Of course not whatever they want, but can kind of have some own guidelines. While it's a, if it's a communal school, then it should be more of what the state decides the school guidelines should be. And therefore, I don't think tattoos should be part of that. But of course, it also depends on what the tattoo is saying. And I think there the school should be able to say no or be able to direct maybe to yeah. please cover that up when you're in school situations and such things. Depends on what kind of tattoos there are. Yeah, in some tattoos, yes. But they're not like where the tattoo is and what, I believe really what kind of tattoo it is, yes. But not where the tattoo is like placed. Anyone should have the possibility and freedom to hire whoever they want and to fire whoever they want for any purpose they want. No, um, I really don't think so. Unless it's something that's, if you have a offensive tattoo, I guess if you have like, let's say like a Nazi sign, like I get why you'd want to ban that. Um, but if you just have like a tattoo, a regular one, um, I don't think that's something you should be able to like go to school or have a job for. But I don't think you should be banned from school or work uh, because of tattoos because that's your own personal choice and that institution shouldn't prohibit you from expressing yourself. We're dealing with a dilemma of freedom of expression. When listening to the answers from the interviews, it seems to be a trend that tattoos should be allowed, but not if they are offensive. But the question we need to ask ourselves then is, when is a tattoo considered offensive and how do we act upon it? So we're looking at three different standpoints when discussing this issue. So freedom of expression is one of the fundamental laws in Sweden and it basically says that everybody should have the right to express themselves. And then it's, is it, and then it's, and then is it more important that the actual principle of people having the right to express themselves than the what the message and meaning behind the tattoo is. However, this would mean that tattoos that are discriminating against some sort of like group of people will be allowed just off the base that we can we can't forbid anyone from not expressing themselves. However, in like schools that would that would like go against the belief that everybody is worth everyone is worth is equal basically so it would be a clashing conflict in terms of what to prioritize so this is possibly the most approachable way and the middle ground to say since people will still have the rights of the freedom of expression however it does hinder 
there are any personal attacks that it does towards a ethnic group or a like, type of religion or just the majority of people or what the majority of people find offensive. So this is the most democratic way. But then again, we must just decide what counts as offensive or not, and like where can we draw the line on what's inappropriate or offensive. And it's very difficult to make an objective decision on where to draw the line. So this option removes all of this subjectivity grey zone since it's so difficult to decide on what is offensive and what isn't since there's always going to be someone who is offended by something mm -hmm. and in this option this grey zone is just removed and since nobody will be able to write an entire list of, of stating what is considered to be offensive and what isn't since it is so subjective on what different people believe. So this scenario will also challenge the freedom of expression. I mean, enforcing restrictions on what someone else get to do and don't get to do. Like, should someone really have that power to determine that for you? And this option is made to ensure that no one is getting offended at all. But some could arguably, arguably be offended if they don't get to express themselves freely as they wish to do. No. Yes. Uh, yes. Of course not. No.